Well, from now until Christmas, it's Christmas shopping time. And there's always that temptation, isn't there, to extend that credit card beyond its real capacity. And let's talk about Christmas and perhaps how to get through Christmas without being a turkey. Gavin Martin's back with us. Hello, Gavin. Welcome back to 2020. G'day, Neil. Uh, whilst I uh, don't like the uh, Christmas shopping part of Christmas, there's lots of other things that I can uh, think of that I enjoy about Christmas. Absolutely. <laughs> but uh, I think I'd prefer to be eating the turkey on Christmas Day than uh, being the turkey because I got into all sorts of trouble spending too much on Christmas gifts. Yeah, it's important to... Uh, make sure that you don't uh, fall into the trap. And the biggest trap is that one of uh, maxing out the credit card and then uh, yeah, feeling like a turkey in January when, when you're, you've are you got a massive credit card uh, bill that you're trying to pay off and, and your, ho- your Christmas holidays are now very stressful rather than uh, quite enjoyable time with the family. So that's probably the biggest one. But there are a number of other things that we can think about too as we lead up to Christmas as well. Here's another little uh, slant on our, our title, uh, you know, don't be the turkey. Is it good to go cold turkey uh, in the lead up to Christmas so that you don't become the turkey on Christmas Day? <laughs> I love your catchphrases today, it's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, exactly, go cold turkey on the, on the credit card and that would definitely mean that you won't end up being the turkey on Christmas Day. Very important one, it's probably the biggest one that really causes stress. So if you do stay within your means, just uh, spend the money that you do have. It has a, a massive impact on the stress level levels that you have not only during Christmas but afterwards as, as well. So start planning now, uh, set your limits and focus on the real meaning of Christmas. Setting limits, let's talk about setting limits Gavin because uh, what does that mean? Uh, limiting how much the credit card has as its maximum or you're talking about setting limits as in preparing something of a budget so you know how much you're spending on each particular person that you love as you're giving a gift this year. Yeah, it, well, you could do both, but I'm thinking more the latter, where uh, you try and set a limit on what you're going to spend on each person that you need to buy a present for. And, and in particular, I'm thinking with the young kids that we've got, they're all putting in there or talking about what they would like for Christmas, and uh, it can add up pretty quickly. And so we you know, need to go through the process of setting the expectation about what they will actually be getting from there during Christmas and uh, make them realistic uh, limits as well. So setting the limits up front, it can really be a, a good way to uh, you know not you know blow the budget um, and then start that purchasing early you can often do a lot better sourcing uh, cheap products uh, earlier on than doing it on Christmas Eve uh, that I often uh, end up doing I like the uh, expression you just made there setting the expectations early because somehow or other in a family and family are usually the ones we spend most on at Christmas time but Uh, But setting expectations actually starts with our children when they're really young. It's like a parenting responsibility, isn't it? Yes, exactly. Setting the expectations both with birthdays, but Christmas and... uh and also in other facets as well, you know, how many activities can you do uh, each week and uh, whilst they might want to do about five or ten, you, you realistically, from a financial and time perspective, you've got to cut those back a little bit to be more realistic. So yeah, setting limits is, is really important. But uh, you can also be creative as well, so you don't necessarily need to just think about how much money you're going to spend, but when, particularly when you're talking about broader family members, they often enjoy getting uh, creative and made gifts as well. Uh, so that can be an, an option for particularly young kids giving to grandparents, etc. There's something with giving. Uh, there's almost like a, a reciprocal expectation that if someone gives you an expensive gift, uh, there's an expectation of an expensive gift in return. How do you deal with uh, the idea that someone might be giving you an expensive gift uh, because they don't have the same sort of a budget restraint that you might have and maybe you can't afford that same reciprocal gift. How do you sort of balance that uh, that need to give a respectable gift without actually being excessive? Yeah, it's a very challenging one there and uh, again it probably gets back to that setting the expectations up front and it might be a conversation we've actually had this conversation with an our uh, my siblings and really trying to talk up front well what, what how much really do we want to spend on each other is it really important that we spend the the hundred or a couple hundred dollars or can we actually have a bit of a challenge and uh, spend the thirty dollars and enjoy the challenge of buying something that they really like for that thirty dollar uh, framework so again it's the upfront conversation uh, rather than you know feeling the pressure on the day that you've spent X amount and they've spent Y uh, and so it is really communicating up front. The other thing that can often work and we, we often do is when it's brought a family involved, we, we do a, a Kris Kringle so that you, you actually talk ahead of time 
that we're not going to buy everybody each a present, but we're going to buy one one person within the group is going to buy one other person a, a present. So that can actually work quite well as well and a bit of fun. And what about the person within the family? Sometimes you've got uh, families where there's one particular couple or one particular family doing particularly well and they're expecting to buy you know reasonably expensive gifts. Is it a wise thing if you actually, the person who can afford to buy the expensive gifts, to just hold back a little bit so you actually uh, create the goodwill and uh, present the love through your gift giving rather than build up the expectations that others will have to try and meet? Yeah, that's a really important point, Neil. And I think it really gets down to the individuals and the individual families, uh, because on one side of it, they might be feeling like I'm being generous, and I would like I, we can, and therefore we'd like to be generous. But then, then they, as you say, there's the pressure, so uh, they could either hold back a little bit, and uh, so there isn't the expectation for them to receive an equally expensive gift. Uh, or they could communicate in some way that, hey, we really like to uh, buy a particular gift, we don't expect an equivalent gift in, in return and, and please don't feel that pressure. So it really gets down to the individual families and how they manage that. But yeah, I think that would be a really wise thing to consider if you are the person that has the more resources than everybody else to, to factor that in. I guess when we talk about the type of topic we're talking about today, how to get through Christmas without being the turkey, uh, we're really talking about how to get through Christmas without uh, having the Christmas hangover, the debt that uh, can accompany the unwise spending in the lead up to Christmas. Uh, I guess that's an incentive, isn't it? If you think about what is the likely outcome of overspending, uh, the challenge you've got perhaps for months trying to fight back that debt, that's a, a real incentive to uh, do something right in the lead up to this Christmas. Yes, to fight, fight back the use of uh, debt and if we get back to the the true meaning of Christmas and, and and maybe focusing on family together celebrating the birth of Christ and just having fun it's all those things that uh, particularly children will remember it's not the flashy toy that's going to you know break in a couple of months or that's going to be the thing that they remember long term so I guess getting back to those things we might create fun traditions of spending time with, with particular family members or friends uh, that's really going to be the long-lasting uh, thing that, that, that your children remember. Well, we're still a little way out from Christmas, but I guess this is not too early to be talking about these types of topics. Uh, how to avoid being the Christmas turkey, uh, not maxing out the credit card, not overspending and not creating expectations that others might feel that they need to meet uh, in reciprocation. Uh, well, Gavin Martin is the founder of Cornerstone Wealth, and I'd point you to Gavin's website at Cornerstone Wealth. And there's also a link to Gavin's website at our website, vision.org.au, on the 2020 page. Gavin Martin, always a pleasure. Thanks so much for being with us today on 2020. Thank you, Neil. Happy Christmas shopping.